Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. And today's lesson number 86, this is going to be a multi-part lesson where I'm going to actually talk about a roadmap for becoming a software architect. So in this lesson, I'm going to introduce the roadmap and really talk about the first piece. Uh, when we talk about becoming a software architect, really the first step in this process is to really make sure you're prepared. And this is what we're going to dive into into this lesson. However, I want to show you the entire roadmap as well in this lesson. Um, after we look at about being prepared, we then develop a personal roadmap and radar. And this all basically allows us uh, a, a, a direction um, for making decisions about different projects, uh, what I should work on, and maybe even in, in different jobs, for example. And after this step of developing this personal roadmap and radar, uh, the next thing in becoming a software architect is to really start focusing on technical breadth. I introduced this in lesson three of Software Architecture Monday. And not only start focusing on technical breadth, but all through the whole process in your career, um, maintaining that technical breadth as well. Now, after developing a personal radar, it's not only starting to focus on technical breadth, it's also about learning the language of software architects, and that's learning the architectural styles and patterns. Once uh, this kind of process happens, the next step is really start focusing on trade-off analysis. One of the things an architect does is to continually analyze trade-offs. And it's starting to focus on looking at the trade-offs of everything in architecture, starting to identify those trade-offs, analyzing those trade-offs. And then it's starting to develop good soft skills, those people skills. From here, uh, there's two paths. It's starting to become the, quote, go-to person on the team. And what this allows you to do is then start developing both facilitation skills as well as leadership skills, those core skills to be able to lead and guide a team through the development or implementation of your architecture. Now, the other thing about soft skills is also making yourself known to business stakeholders. In the process of becoming a software architect, it's really, uh, I like to call it, walk around and be seen. And basically, um, this helps you start developing those negotiation skills. So as you can see on the termination points, um, really becoming a software architect is about maintaining your technical breadth, it's about continually learning and studying the corresponding architecture styles and patterns. It's about always focusing on trade-off analysis. It's about facilitation, leadership, and negotiation skills. And that's the ultimate aspect that really is becoming a software architect. Now, what I'd like to do in this particular lesson is not only to outline this process, because we'll be diving into each of these boxes in future lessons, um, but also to really kind of start the process, um, to make sure you're prepared in the journey of becoming a software architect. And in here, um, the first part of this quote checklist is really um, making sure you have a passion for creating solutions to business problems. I, I love this phrasing. You see, as, as developers, we focus on the technology aspects, um, but really as an architect, um, it's about understanding the business problem, not only from the functional aspect of the application, but what's going on with the business and creating solutions that solve both of those problems. You know, it's also an interest in developing strong people skills. Uh, people skills are required as a software architect. There's so much negotiation happening as a software architect. And if you have no interest at all in people skills, this probably isn't a good career path for you. So it's really a knowing and developing that interest in strong people skills. It's also a desire uh, to mentor, coach, and lead teams. This is another thing an architect does. And if you have no desire to do that and you like to, just to be in your office or your cube or your, your, your home just coding up solutions, um, becoming a software architect will be a very disappointing venture for you. And so that mentorship, coaching, and leadership is, is really a key piece. It's also a willingness um, to stay technical, of course, I think every architect, in my opinion, should still be hands-on in coding. Um, but it's the willingness to go broader 
in technology rather than deeper. And this is a struggle point for a lot of architects or a lot of people who want to become an architect. Now, I'm not saying you can't go deep on particular topics, but an architect really focuses on that technical breadth rather than the technical depth. And so that's that's one of the things is the willingness to do that. And finally, it's an understanding of what's expected as a software architect. As a matter of fact, uh, let's take a look at that understanding of what's expected because an architect is expected to do eight core things irrespective of the title or the role in your particular company. The first is to actually make architecture decisions um, uh, that are used to guide technology decisions for the development teams, uh, whether it be for your a team, your division, your, your, your entire company. Um, making architecture decisions is the first piece. It's also then continually analyzing the architecture to recommend solutions uh, for improvement on that. And this is all about analyzing architecture vitality. It's also about analyzing not only the architecture, but also technology and industry trends and keeping current with those latest trends. You know, the fourth uh, ex expectation of an architect is to ensure compliance uh, with the architecture. Um, kind of rolling back to the first expectation, you make architecture decisions, and those are done for a reason, maybe to support availability or scalability or performance. Well, if we don't ensure compliance with the architecture, uh, then those decisions might not be met or Im implemented, and then the architecture won't work. You know, it's also an expectation to have exposure to multiple and diverse technologies, platforms, environments, but not only the technology, but also to have a certain level of business domain expertise. Uh, knowing all about trading or banking or retail or finance, uh, whatever the industry you're in. Um, it's not necessary to become an expert, but certainly to have a level of business domain expertise so you can actually collaborate and communicate with those business stakeholders. It's also um, an expectation to possess exceptional interpersonal skills, including teamwork, facilitation, negotiation, and finally understanding the political climate of the enterprise and navigating the politics in terms of getting things done. Um, this is what's expected of an architect. And so with all of these, kind of checklist pieces, um, making sure you're prepared to leap into this area is really one of the first steps. And so uh, in future lessons, we're actually going to be looking at all of these boxes. And so we've got the first one checked off. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, I know I do Software Architecture Monday every two weeks, but this group of lessons is so important. I'm going to be releasing these once a week. And so I know it's going to be a little odd because you're used to a two-week cadence, I'm sure, for those of you who are staying tuned to Software Architecture Monday. Um, but in this case, uh, I'm going to be releasing these once a week because I'm so anxious to get all this material out. Um, there's a lot of great resources. I've included QR um, uh, codes here so you can actually just snap a picture of these. Um, but I did a great interview at one of the software architecture conferences by O'Reilly about um, just how to transition into software architecture and how to become an architect. It's a great video. I would encourage you to watch it. It's, it's fairly short. Um, also, our um, uh, book that we released, Neil Ford and myself, uh, back in February of 2020, um, was the uh, Fundamentals of Software Architecture, where all of these aspects are really covered in this book, and I've included the QR code there. Uh, certainly, Software Architecture Monday, where these lessons are housed, um, this is lesson number 86, which means there's 85 other lessons out there. These are short five to 10 minute videos. I try not to go over 10 minutes, <laughs> which is why I'm having to spread this one out a little bit. Um, but um, I would encourage you to go there as well as also, uh, I do a lot of public and private training um, particularly in today's age, when you're listening to this video, um, we've had to do a lot of uh, virtual training um, due to the COVID-19 virus. And so consequently, I do a lot of public events and training of some aspect of software architecture and microservices. And you can kind of stay tuned on that by going to the training uh, link on my website uh, on the menu or the upcoming events. And kind of uh, uh, finally, um, really leverage developer2architect.com. Uh, I know I have the lessons here, but I also have articles, books, and videos that relate to all the stuff we're going to be talking about in this journey to becoming a software architect. And so uh, this is lesson 86, kind of the first part, just the roadmap and really the preparation of becoming a software architect. Please stay tuned next week. 
um, in, in only one week for uh, another Lesson 87, um, really starting to dive into the other aspects of the next steps in kind of becoming a software architect. Uh, thank you all so much for listening. Uh, stay tuned, and we'll talk to you all next week. Bye-bye.